Greetings and salutations. My name is Zook, and we, my dad and me, are going to look at Ubuntu 6.06. Yep. Or 6, Ubuntu 6.6. Well, either way, it's the Ubuntu that was current. This was the current version the month you were born, because you were born in November, so this would have been released in summer. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to see what Luke has to say about Ubuntu 606. This is also the first Ubuntu that I remember seeing. I know that in past videos I was kind of vague about that, but when I took a look at this today, I realized, yeah, this is the one that I played with the first time around. So we're going to boot it up and take a look at it. Now, Luke is used to Ubuntu 1204. I think that's that was the first one that we started using, and there's a video up here showing Luke learning how to use Ubuntu 1204. So that's somewhere on my channel. Remember that video? No. I loaded up the laptop and handed it to you and you started looking up Thomas videos and things like that. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. That was good times. Yeah, so that was the first time that you started using Ubuntu. I think you were about five then. Like Greg. My hmm. young brother. Yeah. Stepbrother Greg is five. So, okay. There's the desktop. You had a nice login screen there. Back in the days when this was current, you were doing real well if you had a computer that had an 80 gigabyte hard drive in it. And of course, you could have bigger drives, but then you would have to go out and spend money. But a lot of the basic systems that you would get would have 40 and 80 gigabyte drives. I remember a big deal. I think uh, not too long after this came out, I ended up buying a computer and I was really jazzed because I had 260 gigabyte drives in it. it so much space. <laughs> now it's nothing, you know what I mean? So this is your login screen, which I think is actually pretty cool. And here's where your options are. You can reboot, shut down, choose a language, all kinds of craziness. And... Uh, you type in your username here. And a password. And here's the desktop. Great login sound on this. It's like the sun rising. It's Ubuntu. Wow. Now what does that look like? Now that looks like water, but... um. No, I mean the desktop. Kind of looks like Ubuntu Mate. Right. 16.4. Yeah, because Ubuntu Mate, the Mate desktop, is a fork of the old GNOME 2 desktop. So when the GNOME project went to GNOME 3, some people wanted to keep GNOME 2 going, and so they started the Mate project, and that's how we ended up with the desktop. Okay. So let's take a look around here. You've got your applications menu. That looks the same, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. There's some things that aren't here, though. Okay. But there we go. And then over here, you can open up the shutdown. We're not going to shut it down because we're going to look at the system. Here's your calendar. That's pretty much the same these days. What's this? That's your volume for your sound. So, there you go. I don't see any... I don't see any network icon. That's kind of weird. We got Firefox and Evolution up here, but let's go through the programs. We'll look at the programs. So, under Accessories, we have... What is this? The... the, the Ubuntu menu editor there. Kind of like a la carte. Let's see what else we got. We have a calculator. We've got a character map. We've got a dictionary. We can take a screenshot. We can open the terminal. Let's open the terminal. And let's see what kernel we're running. 2.7.1 
see when that was done. So that kernel was released in May of 2006, and this particular distribution came out in June. So got a, got pretty much the latest kernel if you got this distribution then. That's pretty cool. And one more thing we'll take a look at here. I'm just curious to see. I think the, uh, back in 2006 they were using EXT3 for the file system. And we can check that out real quick by just looking at the FS tab file. Yep, EXT3. And the processes directory is mounted here as well. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so uh, those were the accessories. We got a bunch of little games in here. Free sell. Now they don't hardly ship maybe like one or two under games. We've got GIMP. We've got GThumb, which is a, a great picture editor. It looks very different here, though. Uh, let's see here. We've got a scan piece of uh, software. I want to see which GIMP we have. So I just open about and it will tell me 2.2.11 for GIMP. So all you GIMP fans out there. Okay. And look at internet. We have the Ecoja soft phone. I'm not quite sure what that did. Let's open it up and see what it is. Error while starting the listener for the SIP protocol. Okay, so this is so you could make uh, telephone calls over the internet. Yep, that's exactly what that's for. Okay. Let's see if we can call mommy. You, I don't think you can. All right, let's see here. Uh, we got Evolution Mail. I used to like Evolution back in these days and used to play with it. Wait a minute, hold on. I want to see if I can get to the mail client itself. Or is it just going to make me? I think it'll probably just make me do this. Mouse is going a little crazy, gang. Uh, go forward. Okay, so I have to put in a bunch of information and do all this crazy stuff to make this work. Okay, never mind. Firefox web browser. Now we tried this out earlier before we started recording and actually got it to do some stuff. Uh, so the web browser that came with Ubuntu 606 was 1.5.03 and let's look at youtube.com YouTube will load, but we can't play any videos. At first, it gave me a thing that said my browser was too old. And if I click on a video, it's just not going to do anything at all. And the reason why is because there is no Flash Player loaded in this. Ubuntu, back in those days, didn't come with any Flash Player. You couldn't play an MP3 out of the box. You'd have to go through and actually install all of that stuff manually. And boy, that was a pain. It was very, very frustrating, especially for if you were new to Linux and didn't quite understand how all this stuff worked, which I was at the time. I remember being extremely frustrated with that. I mean, not just a little bit. All right, so we go back to the 606 LTS page. Not sure. I think this might have been the first Ubuntu LTS, long-term support version. And it was actually supported until 2011. And this is wild. If I go to the latest BBC headlines, this works. This is current. When I first opened this, I thought, this must be headlines from 10 years ago, you know? 
Nope. Watch. Yeah, go on. I don't care. It's actually going to open up the story. Of course, it really doesn't like it because this is such an old browser, but it, it does work. So that's your Firefox web browser from back then. Okay, so what else do we have under Internet? We have the GALM Internet Messenger and the uh, Terminal Server Client. Not sure what that did exactly. Maybe. What's a client? Well, that means you're hooking up to like a secure shell or something with that. I don't know what that was for. Sound and video. We got Rhythm Box and Movie Player. And we're just going to open, we'll just skip forward here. I don't care, man. I just want to open Rhythm Box. Okay. And that pretty much looks the same now as it did back in 2006. A little bit, few changes, but not much. Kind of the same uh, application. I like Banshee better anyway. Let's see. Movie Player. Not much has changed in 10 years on that one. I think I like uh, VLC better. I like VLC better too, especially for playing videos. And then we have the CD juicer here. Sound juicer CD extractor. We looked at that when we looked at Linux Mint. Looks very much like any CD software from that period of time. Uh, let's see. And we'll just take a look at Serpentine. Yeah, no. No recording discs found. This would allow you to burn CDs. Don't know whether it would do DVDs or not. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Nope. It's a Serpentine Audio CD Creator. Doesn't do DVDs. Remember, we are talking about 10 years ago, gang. Although, I had a DVD. When did I get a DVD in my computer? That probably would have been right around that time. Let's see what else we got here. We can take a look at some of the settings real quick here. So we have About Me. And this is where you can fill in all of your finger information. And I, you can add a picture here if you want to. Yep, you got to go find a picture. Doesn't really have any... Let's see. Just trying to go to examples and see if there's any pictures in there. Because I have no pictures loaded on here, of course. And there's nothing to choose from. So. All right. So we've looked at that. That's cool. What else do we have here? We've got desktop background. We can change that. Oh, I like that one. All right. So let's do that one. There's some cool ones in here. I like that one too. Not much to choose from, but <laughs> they give you a little bit. You could always add your own. And then let's see what else we have. We have fonts. Now I already got into that. That looks exactly the same today in the Mate desktop as it did back then. That one, I, I did make the font a little bigger in here so it was easier for you guys to see. And for Daddy to see. And for everybody to see, yeah. Let's see, keyboard and keyboard shortcuts. Mouse, power management. Pretty simple application there. Let's see what else we got. Screen resolution. Screen saver. Let's check out the screen saver. This may or may not work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So, uh, there was one screensaver in here I thought was pretty cool. I was looking at this earlier. I want to see if I can get it to work. <coughs> Excuse me, gang. I had a tickle in my throat. Like that. Just look at the screensavers that were available back then. Of course, this was back when we had CRTs. You kind of needed a screensaver. These days, I don't even fool with screensavers. Let 
This was a problem back then, though, because these screensaver applications, you know what they would do? They would lock up on you. They'd lock up your computer. I mean, like, real bad. That's cool. Lava lamp. That's all of all. That's a cute Mm-hmm. Huh. Wow. I like that one. Oh, there you go. Your screensaver application. Let's see what else we got here. Keep going to administration here. Uh, we got the screensaver, screen resolution, sound theme. Let's see what themes there were. Okay, so the one we're on is human, which was the Ubuntu theme, right? So we've got gray, high contrast. High contrast reverse. That's kind of cool. A lot of high contrast, large print, human, industrial tango, large print, low contrast. <laughs> That's a low contrast theme. Got a bunch in here, man. Look at this. Outdoors. Silicon Simple. Kind of like that one. Traditional. Mist. Hmm. I like um, that one. What, this one? Yeah. The high contrast, large print? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is easy to see, that's for sure. And white. Uh huh. Let's see what else we have in here, real quick. Um, so we looked at the themes, we looked at the sound, we looked at the window. What's the, the window manager there? Okay. So what do we have under here? We've got we've got a device manager. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, that's kind of cool. Shows you everything that's in the computer. Okay. So what else do we have? Uh, networking, printing services, shared folders, software properties, Synaptic Package Manager. Yeah, I saw that, but I forgot to tell you. Yeah, there's Synaptic. Let's so. see if my code's in here. No, I know it's. Besides, it won't find anything because uh, it can't update itself. But they also have here this lovely software application. So we can take a look at that. Minecraft wasn't even around in 2006, man. But you told me that started in 2011. You're a Minecraft nut. Right? Yeah. 2011 for Minecraft? Yeah, it might be up there. So, yeah, this is a pretty cool application. I remember playing around with this when this was new. This Fun games. Quite a few. Stop going so fast. Well, I'm just scrolling through. We're not going to take the time to look at every game. No, I need to look at my game. So you like Ubuntu Mate, right? Yeah. So you would have liked this back then. Yeah, I would like this. When mm -hmm. I was a baby, was I, was I on the computer? No, you weren't. A, you didn't like come, be born and suddenly get on the computer. Matter of fact, I have the... I don't know. When did you start playing around with the computer? Probably when you were about five? No. Four. Four? I think it was four. I know that you took to Ubuntu real fast. <laughs> anyway, gang, that's a look at the Ubuntu 606 operating system from just about ten years ago now. And it was very cool at the time, but it was also very frustrating because back in those days, there were major hardware conflicts with Ubuntu on certain systems, and it wouldn't work. And I remember 
one of the main reasons that I didn't try it was because I didn't have the sound card. No, my sound card worked. It was my video card that didn't work. I couldn't get a driver for the video card, so I couldn't get anything that was in 3D to work at all. It took me a while to get some hardware that would work with Linux. I don't think I had a machine. Well, actually, I know when I bought it. I bought a machine in 2008 that I could run Linux on full-time. And then, at that point, I ran it in a dual boot, so wasn't quite ready to let go. Goodbye, Ubuntu. Hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us while we looked at uh, Ubuntu 606. It's a Linux flashback video. And we'll do another one when something interesting pops up to take a look at like that. Some of you guys really enjoy these flashback videos. Be sure and check out FreedomPenguin.com. i got a new article appearing there very soon. And there's lots of great articles on there from other contributors like myself. Check out Easy Linux on the web and check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you would, give it a like. And you have something to say? Yes. What? Um, we might do a Minecraft video and I might be controlling Minecraft. Oh, you want to do a Minecraft video? Yes, I want to do a tutorial video on a really cool house. I'll tell you what, we'll work on that. Luke wants to do a tutorial video on Minecraft. It's going to be awesome. It'll be awesome. Talk to you guys again soon.